morning, everyone. A little commercial to get you guys pumped up. It's an exciting project for our state of Minnesota, and it took over 8,600 people to design and build this project. So I'm telling a, just a small story uh, of how we approach this complex project. A little bit about our company, Mortensen, is a family-owned organization, 62 years strong, about 5,000 team members, and we do a diverse amount of projects. The things that get us going are the, the most complex projects. The more complex project it is, that's what we want to sink our teeth into. And the U.S. Bank Stadium was no small feat to accomplish. The project has some key challenging elements. The first thing was time. We had to build through two cold Minnesota winters. We had an existing facility that we had to work around. We had a lot of soil conditions. We had bedrock at different levels within the project. We also had some very unique, um, complex uh, features of this project, including the world's largest operable doors on a facility, the largest ETFE roof system that Paul talked about a little bit before, a massive snow catch basin, which is insane, 50 feet deep at certain spots, 38 degree uh, grading angle uh, that we had to accommodate for. And of course, you know, this massive uh, truss system that was uh, a unique challenge on its own. So you, you might think like, what, what do we do to approach a problem like this? When the design team has high expectations of delivering on the design intent and our customer the Sports Authority and the U.S. Vikings, um, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, are, are hoping that we deliver on that promise. Well, it may sound super simplistic, but the reality is, the step one is building a plan. That plan is the key to how we su su are successfully delivering projects of this caliber. And that plan starts off way in the beginning of concept and iterates throughout time. From, so the image on your left shows the, the uh, 4D image of uh, the plan of 2015 built in 2013. And you see the image on your right, which shows the actual. Now, in a lot of cases, we had to really drive that critical path. So Mortensen was able to self-perform our concrete package, which was the key to driving the critical path in this job, to ensuring that all our trade partners, the folks that are really the, the experts to help us deliver this project on time. So this is an example of the day-to-day -day, um, technology we're using. The 4D plan is not something we just use for business development. It's something that we use day-to-day. -day. Our superintendents are driving this. There's over 100 iterations of this 4D model. This is the macro-level model. And you can see all the, the different scopes of work happening at the same time. For us, managing the flow of work is core to our success at any project. At one time, there was over 15 mobile cranes within a bowl that needed to be coordinated. We were assembling the massive truss system, the shoring systems, as well as maintaining multiple crews of concrete to ensure that this project gets built on time. So this is just one example of how we're using that technology. Again, it's not just a pretty picture and a cool animation. The superintendents are using this day to day. Um, in terms of daily accountability, if you can't drive accountability to the plan, and if things get hard, and they always get hard, and they get tough, we don't abandon our plan. We just, we just shore it up. But by, this is our pod meeting. It's a daily uh, plan of the day meeting where we have all of our key trade partners, their soups, their foremans in, providing updates on their scope of work, holding them accountable and, and working with them to ensure that we give them the, the support they need, we remove the barriers, so this way they can execute work based on that plan. This is a meeting uh, Jason Brown and Dave Mansell, our key superintendents, kind of orchestrating this, this uh, massive project. One team, lots of tech, one plan. Um, like Paul mentioned, being software agnostic is key. We, have a, we get a lot of inputs. Tremendous amount of Autodesk products from AutoCAD, and Revit, and Civil 3D, and all the other things um, as inputs from our design team. We also have a lot of our trade partners leveraging Autodesk products, or Katia, like McGrath did, uh, Tecla. So from Mortensen perspective, we have to be able to gather all those inputs, use a whole bunch of other technologies to ensure that 
we communicate that plan. So this is just a small sampling of some of the technology used. Um, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to list out all the technology because it would be a couple of pages. Um, but you can imagine that we, at one point, I think we broke BIM 360 glue because uh, the, the model was so massive. We had over 150 um, models within the federated model. Uh, so we pushed the boundaries of that, and we worked with the BIM 360 team um, to, to help us through that process. So it's been a good partnership, and TTC has been a great help uh, as well. So overall, we, we like to say technology in everything we do. The reality is technology helps us visualize our work plan, and then we can simulate high-risk areas. That's really the core. The driver is to drive better informed decisions. It's all about ensuring that the teams can make the right decisions at the last, for the last planner, the last responsible person on the job site. So we use all kinds of technology from mobile technology, cloud solutions, a ton of the Autodesk products, which is, has been a tremendous help for us, as well as a lot of other um, technologies. In the beginning of the project, obviously, we needed to understand the existing conditions, so we implemented uh, reality capture, laser scanning, and a number of other um, technologies to capture the existing top topography, the surrounding streets, so this way we understand what the existing infrastructure would be so we can better plan our logistics. Um, so this became uh, a core to our starting point for developing our plan, understanding soil classifications and where bedrock was and how the, the massive foundation structures were going to tie into that uh, all played a role. In looking at concrete, again, concrete is their critical workflow. So we had to look at key areas. This image on the left is kind of misleading in terms of the scale of it, but this is a 10 by 10 concrete thrust block that holds up the massive trusses on each side of the, the stadium. We had to model the rebar. We had to we worked with our, our trade partner, Harris, to, to ensure that all the embeds were placed right. The, the embed that holds up that thrust block is the size of a, uh, a Volkswagen. Um, so it's, it's a massive um, three ton, I believe, um, embed that needed to be coordinated down to the anchor bolts, making sure all the systems connect. These are the type of things that are happening in the, backs, in the, in the back of house that no one really sees, but ensures that we can effectively build it. Looking at ways of breaking down the cranes, understanding how these cranes will fit inside the bowl, um, and how we're going to break them down, move them, and, and uh, make sure they, they stay out of the way of the logistics for, for assembling the, the massive shoring and looking even at you know, the detail modeling of the, um, the pivot point in the operable doors. All these things are happening on a daily, hourly basis. We had a team of about six Mortensen VDC people on that job on multiple scopes of work, working with our trade partners and our design partners to help ensure that this was constructible. And after we, we done with our coordination process, since we, since we self-performed that type of work, we are then taking that information and kind of dumbing it down into a digital 2D workflow. So this way our concrete crews know exactly what to build, how the systems are coordinated. We, have, we used uh, Autodesk point layout tremendous, in a tremendous amount, understanding where the, the uh, embeds were around these uh, the concrete systems. We, we've always heard of the term 3D coordination and MEP coordination. We like to talk about total building coordination because the, the purpose behind why we drive this it's not just to make sure that things fit in, in the confined spaces and the closed spaces, but really making sure the design intent is met by, by the construction process. So tying into the audio, visual, the entertainment systems, making all these things um, operable. And that's our goal in terms of 3D coordination. It's not to fit, it's to make sure it's maintainable and operable. And that, again, was a tremendous effort from our trade partners and our team. And of course, the enclosure. It's a beautiful enclosure. It's a fantastic uh, facade. There was a tremendous amount of detailing that went through. Paul touched about it, touched on it a little bit. Uh, on because of the, the way the angular uh, enclosure was built, we actually had to work with McGrath, the, um, the, the enclosure contractor, to understand the profiles. So this way we can connect the primary and secondary steel to the enclosure panels to ensure that we maintain that complex structure. Um, and these are just some of the types of modeling that we're doing. We're looking at taking the design information and looking at the, the beautiful detailing in 2D and trying to create a model that represents that at real scale. 
So this way we ensure that the foldings and the fastening systems and all the interfaces with water barriers and, and vapor barriers are being met in the detailing process. And this is what we, we give to our teams to then go and build. Our models were pretty complex and it was the federated model, like I said, it was about 150 different models um, that made up the overall process. But the goal is to visually communicate so this way we can execute right the first time. In the end of the day, we're just visualizing to communicate. The idea behind the visualization is to help us better communicate, which drives better collaboration within the team, which leads to the better informed decisions. Again, getting the last planner to be able to make the right decision at the right time as this project evolves is key to that process. So in finishing up, I just wanted to show a quick video in, in terms of how our team looked at this project from a planning perspective. When you win a project of this size and complexity, where do you start? You have to start with a plan. We spend more time planning, which equates to less time building. We utilize the most advanced tools in the industry, implement lean planning strategies, leverage our sports expertise, and hire the best people. Mortensen, with the technology they have and the way that they're able to show the job as it's going, makes it easier for every sub. You have a plan, and it's a pretty set plan. It makes everybody's job just much easier. The job gets done in time, people are safe. With the planning so far in advance, I mean a year in advance, we're able to plan for overhead, equipment, and everything else based on using that technology. Created by adding the element of time to a 3D model, the 4D model allows us to simulate hundreds of solutions and optimize the plan to create the best plan. It helps us visually communicate our plan to our trade partners and better collaborate and execute that plan. The amount of technology that was used on this project down to the day on every task is quite the process and done very well. Then having the up-to-date drawings at everybody's fingertips was very important and it was very easy with the technology that was used from the submittal exchange to even to the punch list. Everything was digitalized and easy to pass along with all the different trades. It could be very easy to get documents lost. They did a very good job. Um, with all the technology that was available to maximize that process. Without 4D technology, construction would have taken a lot longer. Costs would have been accelerated. Mortensen had committed to using these personnel who were familiar with this technology, and we ended up having the building before we even anticipated getting it. Virtual reality technology gives us and our customers the ability to visualize completed spaces before any construction has begun. This is a critical tool to make informed decisions while saving time and money and creating the best possible solution. In addition, lean construction and quality prefabrication materials advance the schedule more so than traditional building practices. Our ability to identify opportunities to prefabricate materials and produce project components off-site absolutely deliver this project faster and with the high quality we require. These tools, in conjunction with a comprehensive plan, are the reasons we were able to build the U.S. Bank Stadium in a way that delivered the best value for taxpayers and the Vikings, while creating an iconic building resulting in early and under-budget completion. So redefining what's possible. We like to say we don't compete with our, our peers in the industry. We compete to what is possible. And that's what drives us. And and the, it took a Herculean effort, I, like I said, over 8,600 people to design and build this project, to deliver this project six weeks early and at zero punch list on opening day. That is her, unheard of in the sports business. But we weren't able to do that without the partnership that we have with our design partners and our trade partners to be able to deliver this project at this level. So with that, I'd like to finish by saying there's a tr I could spend an hour talking about this project. There's so much to talk about, but the reality is we have a lot of the information on our website, so please take, take a look at it, and uh, hopefully I'll see you throughout the day, so please feel free to ask me any questions. Thank you.